Joseph was given a dream. He shared it with his family. He shared it with his brothers, his peers, and no one appreciated it. They called him, actually very sarcastically, they referred to him as the dreamer. Joseph didn't wake up the next morning and poof, he was a, he was a ruler. It was a very long story filled with all kinds of dramatic scenes and dramatic things that happened. And the thing with, with a story is that we see it here and we can flip back to Genesis chapter 50 and we can read how it ends. It's like picking up a novel and just turning to the back page and reading it and be like, wow, they lived happily ever after. I'm so happy for these guys. It doesn't help just to pick up and read the last page because you lose the all important elements of the story. You can't skip to the end. There's a lot of story wrapped up in that little phrase to bring to pass. When we're in the middle of that and we're on like chapter four and in chapter four, he gets sold into slavery. In chapter four, he is now wrapped in chains on his way to Egypt. When, when, we, when we read that chapter in our own lives, it's really easy sometimes to say, hey, you know, this, this is just really bad. And so we put down the book and we stop reading. A dream that you can accomplish without God is not a God-given dream. But when God gives you a big dream, these dreams are achieved one chapter at a time. When you're living for God, if you want to experience the miraculous, it requires you to face an impossible problem. When we get into the impossible situation or the impossible problem, we start thinking that the problem is the end of the story. How many times do we find ourselves with this grandiose idea of what God's going to do in our lives because he spoke to us at an altar or he, he spoke to us through prophecy and we're walking along in chains and we think, well, I must have completely missed it. That, that just was, I don't know what that was, but here I am in chains and that's just that ain't never going to happen. Joseph was comfortable in his home, but you never will see your dream come to pass Joseph, if you don't leave home. Now you're a slave and you don't have to worry, Joseph. You can't be a ruler with things and people bowing down to you if you're just going to be a slave. Your, your story can't end there. When you rise up in Potiphar's house and you become the master of all of the servants, you might have achieved a little bit of something and you might have recovered a little bit, but, but God's promise is so much greater than that. Don't get comfortable with this little bit of blessing that you have in your life. And then he he has a setback and he's sent back to prison. You can't get comfortable saying, well, it's just never going to happen. You have to make sure that you keep walking along and keep trusting that if God made a promise, he is going to make it come to pass. It's interesting that God's promises are always something that only he can provide. But his fulfillment of the promise, you need to understand this, it's Bible. His fulfillment of the promise depends on us. He gave the children of Israel, that's millions of promises. I'm going to give you this land over here, and it's flowing with milk and honey. I've brought you out of Egypt. I've done all kinds of miracles, signs, and wonders, and my promise is that I'm going to give you this land. And they got to the edge of it, and they said, we can't take it what they did is they, they were reading their story and they got page after page after page and they got to chapter 8 and they're thinking oh my word here it says that there's giants that we're going to face over there and here it says that there's battles and there's cities and there's people over there they have chariots of iron and it has all this great thing we're, we're just closing the book and, and this is where our story is going to end God got so aggravated that he said okay you just wander around there in chapter 8 for the rest of your life and I'm going to let your chariots children open the book back up and say oh wait look in chapter 9 what happens the story doesn't end you got Jericho that's fallen down you got giants that are fallen you got promises that are being delivered you cannot stop in chapter 8 don't mistake the chapter that you're going through right now as the end of the story God's dreams are dependent on the perseverance of the dreamer. 
Let me tell you something. God's story in our eyes is never going to be perfect because on the way to the palace, Joseph had to go into slavery. He had to go into the pit. He had to, he had to be sold for, for silver. And then he had, to be, he had to be lied about and framed. And then he had to be thrown in prison. Potiphar's house was not the goal. And just being a little bit high was not the goal. He was putting him up here so he could save many people alive. We're, we get a little bit bitter and disconnected sometimes with the things that God has put into our life, even the talents that God has given us, because we don't see the end of the book that we expected. We don't see the fulfillment of the promise. We're seeing all the things that he's bringing to pass, and we don't understand that, hey, this is the only road that's going to get you there. Because in order for you to be second in command, there's this one time when Pharaoh's going to have a dream, and you've got to be there. Somebody's going to remind you. It, it, it's all just going to fall into place. You cannot see the things that I'm putting together because I'm the author and you're the character. I'm the one that's writing the story. You're just the one that's supposed to act out everything that I say. And when I say that you go into prison, you've got to go into prison trusting that I do know what that promise was about. I do know how I'm going to fulfill it. Just keep following me. Just persevere because the promise is there. The story doesn't end in the prison I felt like God's saying hey the promises the dreams he said his word is yea and amen he doesn't make a promise that he cannot deliver but his promises require us to keep turning the page through the prisons through the through the lies through the framing he requires us just don't stop turning the page. Just keep walking. Just keep allowing him to develop that story. He is the author and he is the finisher. There's going to be joy. The hills are going to break forth with singing and the trees are going to clap their hands. There's going to be rejoicing when you fulfill the promise, when you finally turn over to that last page and you realize that, hey, it wasn't for nothing. He fulfilled every word of his promise that the only thing that's going to take that promise away from me and have to have God give it to somebody else coming behind me is for me to say I'm tired of turning pages. My story ends here. This is as far as I can go. Can I tell you, maybe you need to dust off some of those things that God has told you in the past. Maybe you need to go back and you need to dig up some of those things that were buried and forgotten about. My story doesn't end here. The story of the Refuge Church doesn't end in this hotel. It doesn't end in the next building we get. It doesn't end in the next. There's a story that God is writing. And who knows what, what the end is and who knows what adventures lay in it. Who knows what ups and downs he's going to write into the story. And every little thing he does is to accomplish his purpose. And when we get to the end, there's going to be a day that, that it dawns on me that he has, he has fulfilled every purpose promise and when we get to the end of that day I'm going to be able to turn around like Joseph and say look at everything he did and all of these all of these bad things in hindsight I can see he was using those things to bring to pass how it is today he's using those things to bring to pass all of the prisons and all of the ups and all of the downs and, and all of the all of the great times and all of the struggles and all of the all of the rejoicing and all of the mourning and all of this he was writing this beautiful story and it brought to pass as it is today. Can we stand today?